it gives me great pleasure to introduce our college captain, Nathan Obermiller, who will now deliver his graduation speech. Your MCs for today's ceremony are Nathan Obermiller, Kate Morris, and Isaac Nankerville. Good morning, distinguished guests, Dr. Bishop, Mr. Seckham, ladies and gentlemen, students, the graduating class of 2014, and of course, our parents. <laughs> I've been given the honour to finish off this magnificent year with a, gra with a graduation speech, and I could not be more proud of my cohort. Ladies and gentlemen, at the start of this year, I challenged the talented Year 12 students to seize this year, take it head on, and take every opportunity possible. And I stand here today knowing that we have achieved this goal. Seated in front of you today, ladies and gentlemen, is a group of 115 hardworking, dedicated, astronomically talented students. In front of me, we have the future. Whether it's Toby and Isaac leading the way with their new apps, or people helping to save the world in Taylor and Kate, we hold the future YouTube stars in Matt Anderson and Hayden Darrell Blair. <laughs> We've got the most talented musicians and actors with us today. We'll all be paying hundreds of dollars to hear or see Izzy, Michaela, Isabella, Yolanda, Millie and Mitch acting, singing and dancing. And remembering when we used to hear and see them for free on assembly. We have the future elite athletes with us. Amongst us, we have Kane and Ryan as volleyball kings the next world swimmers in Liam and Caitlin. We have future NBA players in Nick Bruch, future Chelsea football players in Connor Jones, and whatever sport Lachlan decides to play, <laughs> he'll be the best in the world at that. And let's not forget that we have Josh Wu, a triple national weightlifting gold medalist and a triple international bronze medalist. Ladies and gentlemen, in front of you today are the next generation's top dancers, tradies, CEOs, architects, authors, directors, lawyers, maybe one mathematician, engineers, <laughs> doctors, and zoologists. But do you know why we're the future? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's not just because of our natural talents, it's because of our desire, our push, our motivation. Our grade has a never say die attitude. We would rather the many, 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 many late nights as Isaac does, <laughs> as opposed to giving up. When it's something that we care about, we will do it to the limits of our own humanity. We keep pushing and pushing, so much so that people like Wayne, against their, butted, against their better judgment, would try out energy drinks. And Caitlin even gave up the beach for a couple of weeks <laughs> to make sure her assessment was top quality. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for the hardest working people in the world, here they are. But this isn't all that makes us great. What makes us great is how we help each other. Every person who's about to get on stage and finish their schooling life has helped me in some way, whether directly or indirectly. We've helped each other get through this year. Doing it by ourselves would have meant that the chainsaw-wielding bears would have been constant companions. We've helped each other a little too much on occasion. <laughs> but we've bounced back from that. <laughs> and we've bounced back from everything we've been thrown at us. Which is the reason why, no matter what happens in our life, we can do anything. Resilience and the ability to bounce back is a crucial part of humanity. As Nelson Mandela says, the greatest glory in living lies not in ever failing, but in rising every time we fall. So that's what Sheldon students, and indeed everyone here today, needs to keep doing. To not fear failing, but fear not trying, not attempting, not being human. We've been resilient this year, just look at all the achievements we've enjoyed. We've succeeded in putting on the hardest musical ever done at Sheldon College with a relatively inexperienced cast. We managed to win the AFL Grand Final against elite athletes <laughs> after finishing the regular season at fourth, with half the team still not knowing the rules. 
We won a national business competition that we'd never entered before and had no idea if we were doing it right. We not only won, but obliterated the competition in our first ever TAS track and field appearance. And we made it through to the final rounds of debating, with 50% of the team having never debated before. We accomplished all of these things as either the underdogs or first timers, being unsure yet believing in ourselves. And this resilience will be our savior in life. There is the story of a young but earnest Zen master who approached his teacher and asked his master, if I work very hard and diligently, how long will it take me to find Zen? The master thought about this, then replied, 10 years. The student then said, but what if I work very, very hard and really apply myself to learn fast? How long then? Replied the master, 20 years. But if I really, really work at it, how long then? Said the student, 30 years, replied the master. But I do not understand, said the disappointed student. At each time that I say I will work harder, you say it will take me longer. Why do you say that? To which the master replied, when you have one eye on the goal, you only have one eye on the path. This is the dilemma we can face if we focus too much on our studies in uni or focus solely on that one dream. So I implore everyone here today to stop and smell the roses, continue going to beaches and enjoy life whilst understanding there is more to it than just results. Dr. Bishop constantly reminds us of the broader values that education offers us. And she's right. There's an infinite number of things simple tests don't measure that are vital to who we are. Tests don't measure our resilience, our curiosity, our humor, endurance, empathy, leadership, compassion, courage, our resourcefulness, and of course, our humility. These values have changed us all. Imagine someone, anyone, going from a shy little boy, unable to walk, into, uh, unable to, walk to school without holding his mum's hand in grade nine, <laughs> to someone who gets to stand up in front of everyone today to deliver a graduation speech after his mother made him hold, made him hold her hand on the way in. <laughs> Sheldon sees the best in all of us and to repay them for their hard work and to continue their legacy, we must continue to be at our best. Whatever we do, we must do it 100%. Come back to the 10 year reunion and so long as you do what you do, the best that you can, you'll find 114 of your classmates are proud of you. In saying that though, as if you were learning Zen, appreciate life. So I look forward to seeing all of you after school and helping you along the way with your goals. I can't wait to see Sarah and Gemma, both with shaved heads, supporting charity, and seeing Zach Sideburns return <laughs> to support his ego. I assume that we'll see the girls and Hamish compete to see who can get their hair to grow out the longest. We need to stay connected so that the 10 year reunion comes around and it's almost like there's no difference. We're all going to miss everything about this place. We'll miss visual literacy lessons with Mrs. Scully. We'll miss the handball tournaments. We'll miss our egg and spoon races. We'll miss our little mascot, Isaac. We'll miss Christian's smile. We'll miss the Easter egg hunts, singing the college song, Belinda in general, the many arguments, the daily demon, and Mitchell's weird inspirational Facebook posts. <laughs> We're even going to miss Zach and the way that he makes us feel better about ourselves. <laughs> the only way to not miss these things is to make sure that we do not drift apart. I urge you all to stay connected with each other. Ladies and gentlemen, like Dr. Bishop, I also receive emails. And this one was from a student in Nayula. And this person is in our year level. And this person has perfectly summed up what I and many, many students in our cohort think. And I'd like to read it out to you. Hi, Nathan. I know you'll be writing a graduation speech soon, and I just wanted to let you know how I felt about the often dreaded 
but truly surreal grade 12. This year has been one hectic ride, that's for sure. The ups and downs have been nothing but extreme and have often left me, and I'm sure other people, feeling scared and unsure about the future. I think that everyone has different thoughts about grade 12. Some believe it's all about the end result. Some believe it's just a year to struggle through. But really, it's one massive learning curve before you're catapulted into the real world. However, it's one learning curve that I could honestly have not gotten through without the support that we've had this year, especially from the cohort of 2014. This cohort has been so incredibly kind, loving, forgiving and supportive, and it's appreciated more than anyone will ever know. This cohort is the most diverse and entertaining group of people I've ever had the pleasure of being a part of. Where any of us would be without everyone else is completely unimaginable. And I'm also thankful to the wonderful teachers. They've been there throughout the whole year, ready to listen to the troubles and woes, and I cannot thank them enough. Their support has been invaluable. To the grade 12 families, parents, siblings and pets, You've been there when we've cried, you've celebrated our successes, and you've helped us through the toughest year of our schooling life. And I'm sure that everyone appreciates them and loves them so, so very much. Love Anonymous. I really think that that just measures how much help we've needed. We haven't done this all by ourselves. Sure, we're the ones that had to sit through the QCS and all of its wonderful lessons. Yes, I understand that we're the ones desperately typing at 4 a.m hoping that the teachers don't check the bibliography too much. <laughs> but our families and our friends are the ones who've had to hear those complaints and have had to try and have tried to make it better for you. I'm sure everyone has to thank their mums and dads for buying stuff for whatever crazy habits we developed along the way, making sure we were fed and able-bodied and desperately trying to keep us away from the dangers of no sleep. Thank you to the brothers and sisters for staying out of our way during block exams, <laughs> sometimes helping with our chores and not minding hearing rehearsed monologues or speeches over and over and over in the car here. Ladies and gentlemen, throughout the year, I've personally had help from my fellow captains. I also have to thank my lovely prefects. Ladies and gentlemen, these prefects are absolutely perfect. They're probably, they're probably the second most perfect group of prefects I've ever had the privilege of hearing of. <laughs> the work done by them will have an impact on the college for a long time. So, to the seniors, no bias here. I'm happy to say that you've managed to become the best cohort ever to go through Sheldon. <laughs> but make sure you continue to complete your own personal goals. Do that, and you'll find the meaning that everyone searches for in their lives. To the year 11s, and those of you coming up through school, you've heard rumors about grade 12. Some are true, some are truer, <laughs> but others, well, they're true as well. <laughs> but let me tell you this, on behalf of all the grade 12s, stay together, work as one, be together, celebrate together, be upset together, stumble together, get over it together, laugh together, cry together, do whatever you want to do, but do it together, and you'll find year 12 a bit more of a breeze. Go fast by going alone, but go far by going together. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching us learn and being the best cheer squad that we could ever ask for. We will make Sheldon proud as we go on our journey of love, laughter, and learning. For the last time, stay beautiful, Sheldon College. Thank you, Nathan. I would